So hi everyone and welcome to Commons in a Box Open Lab and Open Platform for Open Learning. We're going to start by introducing ourselves. I'm Charlie Edwards, co-project director of Commons in a Box Open Lab and co-director of the Open Lab at City Tech. Hi everyone, I'm Jody Rosen. I use she, her, hers pronouns. I am an English professor at City Tech and also co-director of the Open Lab. Hi, I'm Chris Stein, uh, he, his pronouns. And I am the director of the BMCC Open Lab and also chair of the Media Arts and Technology Department at the Borough of Manhattan Community College. Hi, I'm Boone Gerges. Uh, he, his pronouns. I am the lead developer for uh, the City Tech Open Lab and also for the Commons in a Box Open Lab project. So, um, welcome. We wanted to say that we'll be showing you a bunch of things. So, um, if anything goes by too quickly, our slides will be available and they'll include links, alt text and other information so you can explore um, everything we show you at your leisure. Here's what we'll be talking about. I'm going to be introducing Commons in a Box Open Lab or CBOX Open Lab as it's called. Jody and Chris will show some examples of how you might use it. Chris will talk about how you can get started. That's based on his experience at BMCC. And then Boone will talk about our community driven development model. And then we look forward to having a great conversation with all of you on the day. Obviously, I'm not going to read this slide, but it shows uh, many people who have contributed. And so this is just to say we're a few of the many people involved in the work that we're going to be showing you today. So the Open Lab started at City Tech. Um, city Tech is a minority serving institution in downtown Brooklyn that's part of the City University of New York. It serves about 17,000 students in a wide range of technical and professional programs. And in 2010, the college won a major grant from the US Department of Education that enabled us to create an open digital platform for the City Tech community, and it's called the Open Lab. It's built using WordPress multi site with BuddyPress for social networking. And everyone at City Tech can use it, students, faculty, staff, and alumni. It's been enormously successful since its launch in 2011. The Open Lab has served almost 38,000 members. Hundreds of courses use it each semester, along with student clubs, portfolios, and projects of all kinds. CUNY has a strong track record with WordPress. In 2009, a team at the Graduate Center, led by Matt Gold, launched the CUNY Academic Commons as a common space to connect the members of the 25 campus CUNY community. That's also built using WordPress, multi-site and BuddyPress, and it was actually the inspiration uh, for the creation of the Open Lab at City Tech. As the Commons took off, they were approached by other institutions that wanted to do the same thing. And so in 2012, with funding from the Sloan Foundation, they created something called Commons in a Box, and that abstracts the features and functionality of the commons and puts it in a box so that others can easily install it and create their own commons communities. And it's used by hundreds of groups and organizations around the world. So meanwhile, back at City Tech, just as the commons had experienced, people kept asking us how they could create a site like the Open Lab themselves. And so with funding from the NEH, we collaborated with the Commons in a Box team to build a new version of CBOX specifically designed for teaching and learning and modeled on the Open Lab. So in the same way, it abstracts the features and functionality of the Open Lab at City Tech, packages up, puts it in a box, and means that now anyone can create a Commons for Open Learning modeled on the City Tech Open Lab. So to unpack the name, it's open because um, unlike closed online teaching systems, it allows everyone to share their work with one another in the world. And then like a lab, it provides a space where they can work together in innovative ways. So now I'm just gonna show you a few of the features. The homepage provides a dynamic view of activity on the, slide, on the site with the ability to spotlight great work and communicate with members via the slider. The site's theme, which controls, as you know, the visual appearance, is designed to be accessible and user-friendly on mobile devices and provide an attractive showcase for member-created content. 
it has a simple but flexible structure. It consists of a homepage, obviously, um, and a member directory, and then directories for groups of different kinds. So um, you can have things like courses, projects, clubs, and portfolios. That's what we have on the Open Lab, but these can be customized to meet your needs. And each group type, so um, for instance, a course has a homepage and then an optional associated WordPress site. Members are at the heart of the site and you can have different types of members. So by default, these are students, faculty, staff and alumni. Um, and you can also filter them in different ways. So whatever makes sense for how you're going to be using the site in your organization. Each member has a profile on the site where they can share information about themselves and it shows their activity. Um, it provides members with easy access to their work and um, they can also make friendship connections, send messages and create portfolios, um, which can be public or private. Each type of group has a directory page. As with members, you can define different ways of categorizing them and filtering them. And in a similar way, each group has a homepage that provides information about the group and access to collaboration tools, file sharing, document editing, discussion forums, calendars, so, and so on. Members can also allow, allow their groups to be cloned. Um, so you can clone a course, for instance, and then they can also control privacy of the group. So um, the default is open, but there are also fine grained privacy controls. And then you can have obviously um, associated WordPress sites with the group and CBOX Open App administrators can define built-in templates that promote good site organization. And then behind the scenes, there's a user-friendly dashboard which allows you to, um, the site admin to set up and control the different aspects of the site. For instance, what types of groups you want, what types of members, etc. And now Jody will share some examples of how you might want to use it. Thanks, Charlie. I'm gonna go ahead and give some examples of some of the features that you just mentioned. I wanna start by talking about courses at City Tech. We, hundreds of courses at City Tech have used the Open Lab um, and do use it each semester. In the course directory, you can see the wide range of disciplines suggested from Africana studies to uh, communication design, um, English and math, architecture. Each course, as Charlie was saying, has a, a home or profile as well as a site. And we did a lot of work um, during the pandemic to um, create more of a, um, of a uniform menu option for the courses to give them structure and to model best practices for everyone using the Open Lab for their teaching. So if you see across the uh, below the header image, you could see a lot of information like course information, activities, student posts, and help and resources. One of the real strengths of working in the open is having a lot of flexible design for pedagogy. Um, the pedagogy really drives some, some great experimentation. Here's an example of a math course that um, brings together students um, in two different, uh, two different courses. We've done this before where um, one course might um, ask students to go and um, comment on work that students in another section of the same course have posted. But here's an example where students in a 1000 level math class and students in a 2000 level math class are collaborating on an assignment and commenting to each other. Some other really great examples come from um, interdisciplinary courses where fat two faculty members from two different departments um, will teach a class together. And um, these are very place-based courses. There's a lot of, they're very media rich. Very often students will be posting um, podcasts as final projects. Sometimes they'll um, create another site outside of the course as the home place for, for a final project, like a, a series of podcasts. Another really exciting opportunity that we have is to have two courses occupy the same space. So for our first year learning community program, we might have an English course and a communication design course as, as shown here. Um, sharing the space, student work is all happening in the same place. There's a lot of crossover that can happen. And then um, each course in the learning community, um, all the learning communities have a peer mentor that works with the students. And there's a space on the, on the site as well for the peer mentor to communicate with the students. We're really lucky that we have 
um, a, a very robust open educational resources program at City Tech and that they um, found a home on the open lab. They were not uh, part of the open lab from its inception, but um, really have, have found a, a great, great way to, to use the open lab, not only um, for the for the OERs themselves, which I'll talk about in a second, but also for the fellowship program that brings faculty together to um, get some professional development and collaborate with each other as they build out their OER. The OER themselves um, from a wide range of departments, um, it's a program that's open to um, both full and part-time faculty members and everyone is learning um, about building OERs, about accessibility, about what it means to use things in the in the open um, while they're also um, learning to use the open lab and some of the oers have gone on to become um, to be developed more fully into the um, model course program which i'd like to talk about model courses were a really um maybe always a wish list item but during the pandemic we saw a real need to provide um, course content that was um, following best practices that could not only model best practices, but um, really put them in the hands of, of faculty who didn't necessarily have the time for um, a complete overhaul of their, of their courses that would um, allow them to teach remotely. And what faculty developed were really um, exciting courses, full courses with all of the materials already in them for the semester that anybody could clone. It leverages the cloning options that we have. And um, many faculty members have used them. I think something in, in the English department, I think over a hundred of them have been, um, it, it has been cloned over a hundred times, which is really exciting. Course hubs were another aspect of, that were kind of hand in hand with the model courses so that there could be content that was outside of the course hub that was shared widely across all sections um, that could be shared with um, anyone maybe using a different platform or um, communicating with their students in different ways. What was also really exciting is in the, the true spirit of OER, um, these are materials that are, are widely openly available and anybody could come and use them. So um, our, our hope is that more and more they get used in other courses, um, let's say outside of math, in a math-based field that they can come and use the resources that have been collected here. One of the really exciting things that happens is um, all of this work is happening in the same platform, which means that work that students do in courses could find their way into students' e-portfolios. And every student has an e-portfolio, can set it up an e-portfolio, links directly from their profile. And in addition to being able to um, use it for their, for pull things from their coursework, maybe from internships as well, or research projects, you know, club work that they might do. And there's a really great tool, an add to point my portfolio button that allows them to um, pull work that they've created on anywhere on the open lab. Um, it creates a citation for it. Um, and also gives a space for students to put in a contextual note um, to add that into their portfolio. Faculty and staff as well can also take advantage of portfolios. Um, this is an example of a faculty member's portfolio that he used for um, to house his teaching portfolio, um, as well as the rest of his um, portfolio for, for, for promotion. Um, and it's really great that students in his department, um, in this case, architectural technology, can see his work as an example of what they might wanna to move toward and to use that as an example for their own portfolios. There are a lot of exciting collaborations that happen outside of City Tech or with City Tech and other um, community partners. And the Open Lab is a great place for these partnerships to happen in, in large part because the sites can be open, can be easily accessed from outside. and um, are really just beautiful examples of student work that folks at City Tech and then outside of City Tech can, um, can get to experience. So this was um, one example we have here is a typography design class asked students each semester to design posters for uh, Brooklyn Historical Society, what's now the Center for Brooklyn History. Um, another example is a, um, a program that, that pairs City Tech with uh, NYCHA ARC scholars um, through the uh, New York City Housing Authority. Student clubs um, also can have a space on the open lab and these do not need to be um, 
official clubs, but they can be kind of any startup clubs. Sometimes they start up on the open lab and then can uh, become more formal clubs. Very often um, official societies in different, from different departments will have a club as well. And this is an example of the experiential art and design club that really takes advantage of a lot of the um, multimedia aspects. Um, I'm, I'm not showing video right now, but if you were on the page and scroll down just a little bit, you would see um, video that they uh, create and share. And then in addition to some of the uh, more startup or um, instructor oriented, student oriented, there's also a lot of um, administrative work that gets conveyed by the open lab. And um, sometimes those might not seem like the most exciting <laughs> aspects of it, but it's really, um, these are, represent some really great partnerships that have a big impact and are, you know, a really great way of showing how the college comes together on the open lab. So academic affairs, office of the provost, um, the city tech guide that includes all of um, first year programs and orientation and things like that, the student ready college committee, um, all look to us to share out information um, through the whole college that, that we are central enough that it becomes um, a way of conveying a lot of information. And then finally, we and the open lab team like to share out a lot of um, helpful resources and um, have an open pedagogy on the open lab site that we um, communicate with our faculty whenever we can and look to the faculty to share with us great ideas of what they're looking at and what they're doing. I'm going to pass it on to Chris. Thank you, Jody. And I'm going to talk now about BMCC's experience with the open lab. We started the open lab as one of the early adopters of the CBOX open lab plugin, and we did it with some funding from the US Educational Department uh, with a digital pathways project that the school is running, and also from CUNY's Open Educational Resources Initiative. And we did this uh, from the start in partnership with City Tech's Open Lab and the CBOX Open Lab team. So this is an image of our homepage, and the design and layout of this is mostly stock, as you would get if you installed uh, CBOX yourself. And it has been almost uh, two years since we started. Our initial start was a pilot period with a limited membership, which we've now opened to the entire BMCC community. And we've seen a healthy adoption, especially since COVID and most of our classes moving online. This here is a shot of the homepage for an English 201 course. And you can view this course as it's open to the public. And it's an example of how faculty at BMCC are teaching in the open. And the ability to easily open what you create using the open lab really fuels faculty collaboration, open pedagogy, and also for students, allowing them to, you know, they're doing working and creating knowledge in the open with their assignments, projects, the e-portfolios, and more all through the open lab. Course hubs are a great way for faculty to collaborate directly on the course structure and material and pedagogy, and they can also be a resources for students taking the courses. So the hubs, their structure, the content are all designed by the faculty that teach the course. And the course hub you see here is for an introductory critical thinking course. And it's structured so that faculty can pick and choose resources from the site to use in their courses um, or point students directly to the hub if they're using something um, either outside of the open lab or um, just want to link to it from their course site. Uh, we've also developed OER course templates, and the templates allow people to copy an entire course over, and this is really helpful for example for adjuncts who are assigned a course right before the semester begins, they can clone that OER course template and teach with it, and other no cost materials, um, rather than having to be just given a syllabus and a, a commercial textbook to go off of. So these hubs and templates have proven to be a valuable resource for us during COVID, when we couldn't meet in person to train or discuss pedagogy, and also for faculty who had to learn to use online materials in their courses for the first time. And similar to online commercial textbook platforms, readings and activities are integrated in a way that's easy to access. Uh, and in, in this example, through modules or other organizational structures that the faculty member might choose. So rather than uh, the publisher dictating the sequence and activities, the instructor has the freedom to do that and design a learning experience the way they want it to be with the OERs they want and other no cost materials. And also being on the web allows for mashups of adopted, adapted and created works in a way that combines the structure of a textbook with the multimedia possibilities that the web offers. 
And also professors can elect to make the material shareable and clonable so other professors can remix and reuse the content. This slide is the intro to American government class from uh, Professor Arto Artinian, and he's broken the class into the, the modules. And each module contains videos created by the professor, like the introductory video you see on the right uh, and in, in the second image, and also videos created by other people, links to readings, discussion boards, and more. So when uh, the site is the book, there is no cost to the student, no waiting at the bookstore. They're just ready to go on day one. And as we've seen in previous slides, students can create portfolios and use that add to my portfolio button to add content from their classes and other groups that they're in to their open lab portfolio. And faculty and programs at BMCC have been using the portfolio feature to help students track and display their work and progress in the degree. Uh, on the left, you see that image is a portfolio example template that Professor Jen Longley from Early Childhood Education uses to help their majors document their work and create a professional portfolio. And on the right, there's an image that shows how the Open Lab automatically collects member profiles from members in a group and puts them there on the group profile. And in this introduction to 2D animation course, Professor Jody Culkin has students create their portfolios as part of the course and add their course work to it as they go along. By default, CBOX OL comes with four group types, courses, projects, portfolios, and clubs. And at BMCC, both because we started with a limited number of users, uh, of which the student clubs didn't immediately participate. And because we wanted to encourage community across the college among students and faculty and staff, we decided to change clubs to communities. So this screenshot shows our community page and some of the customized categories that we use for the different types of communities. And this is a great feature of CBOX OL that you can do this kind of customization. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about just getting started with Commons in a Box Open Lab and our experience. So one of the most important things for us was gathering a team together. And we were really lucky enough to get a team that was diverse. We have e-learning, the Center for Teaching and Learning, the library, OER. Uh, my department actually has used WordPress already. And all of the members of the team had prior experience with WordPress and open source software. Getting this team together also led to hosting with Reclaim through some funding we got through OER dollars. Uh, we used our technology fee to help move from our digication platform to the BMCC Open Lab for our e-portfolios and OER funding also to support staff, which brought us Sayel, who's been a great help with helping faculty to get their courses and materials online. I'd like to give special thanks too to Gina and Jean and Tom, who've really been invaluable in getting this project off the ground. This team is really an important part of the, getting it started. Reclaim Hosting, which I mentioned, and you see here their logo, offers customized hosting op options for CBOX OL, and they'll really help you get started, and they can go from no frills, basic installations, to more managed ones and custom solutions. They know CBOX OL, they know education, they're used to working with the timelines and payment eccentricities and other things that come with working with educational institutions, and again, it's the hosting provider that we do use for the BMCC Open Lab. We did also set regular meeting times to get to work on implementing the open lab. And what you see here is a screenshot of the administration part of CBOX OL and the WordPress dashboard and customizing it and choosing the group types and categories and things like that is both an ongoing process and really important to help make sure that your installation fits your needs as an institution. This here is an a screenshot of the FAQs on the CBOX Open Lab website, and those are also very helpful in getting started. You can read them and look at them, uh, but also uh, let us know as well if you have other information that you need. There's also a support forum on the website for CBOX Open Lab, and it's actively monitored by the teams and the people who develop Commons in a Box Open Lab and other users of the software. So it's really a great place to ask questions and get answers from people who are really active on the project. And we're happy to announce that soon we'll be launching a community hub. So that'll be a space where people who are using CBOX Open Lab and the people who are interested in using it can come together and talk not just about technical problems, but also about practice, praxis, and other aspects of getting an open lab and running at your institution. And now I'd like to hand it off to Boone Gerges.
I'm going to talk a little bit about community-driven development. Uh, this is the development model that we use for uh, Commons in a Box Open Lab, and it's really a model for talking about how software like Commons in a Box can be developed in a university environment in collaboration with and kind of in a symbiotic relationship with uh, individual institutions. Um, what that means sort of at a high level is that the Commons in a Box Open Lab was developed based on the City Tech Open Lab, which is a very specific campus oriented project oriented at City Tech. Um, and then features, we continue to develop new features for the platform, first by workshopping them at individual um, campuses. So City Tech Open Lab wants a specific feature. We build the feature for them. We get feedback from their actual users. We iterate on it and we test it using their actual users. And only once we have something that we think is refined, do we try to roll it into commons in a box. And uh, this, this helps to get good features out there, features that we know are going to be useful. And it also helps us to kind of spread around the funding that's available for building custom things for universities that then turn into open source software. So I'm gonna kind of show you how this works by talking about a specific example from the history of the commons in a box project. Um, this feature is called badges. Uh, so where this starts is with a, a specific need at City Tech. Uh, you know, the, the, the Open Lab had been in use for a number of years, and there was a large amount of content on the, on the Open Lab. Um, and it started to become difficult to discern different kinds of content from other things. So in particular, if you were go, went looking for open educational resources, just searching the word open wasn't really very helpful because so many things may have used the word open in one way or another. We really wanted a way to say, this is a designated sort of official vetted uh, uh, OER project. Um, part of this came externally from funding that we got from New York State and elsewhere that had to do with uh, building a platform that supported the development and dissemination of open educational resources. So we had this need internally and we said, okay, what can we do to do this? Well, how, maybe we need some sort of system for flagging certain items that have been vetted by the open lab team as, as qualifying as like official open educational resources. So we use the concept of badges. Badges, be, the idea being that you would, you would sort of have a, have a marker on individual uh, groups that have been vetted by the open lab team uh, in, in the original iteration, it was like a little circle, like a kind of like a badge, like a gold medal, let's say, or a blue medal in this case, uh, with the words, with the letters OER, and it would appear on the um, on the uh, avatar when you look at the individual group profile or group homepage. It would also appear in directories, and there would be filters in the uh, drop-down filters in the sidebar on directories that would help you drill down and find this content. So this is the original concept. Help me find. Uh, groups on the open lab that are that we know to be reliable sources of open educational resources. So we built this, we conceived it, we designed it, we built it, we launched it. And then at City Tech, um, we had a semester or two of actual use. Uh, this means that users were using it and then they were, we had feedback loops built in so that faculty users and other users of the open lab could provide feedback on what was and wasn't working. And the open lab team also had ideas about what was and wasn't working and had ideas for other ways to use this feature that we had built. You know, one example is the idea of adding multiple badges, you know, because we started with OERs, but we soon realized that there's other reasons why you might want to indicate that something is a vetted resource in the open lab things like model courses, first year learning communities and so forth. Um, the original user interface that we had set up for this didn't work really well. You know, there wasn't a lot of space to add, um, to add a lot of text. If you wanted to award more than one badge to a given group, it would kind of cover up the avatar. We needed to go back to the drawing board, do a little bit more design work. We changed it to these text flags where you can stack them and you can fit a little bit more text in there. We also made modifications to the ways that you drill down in the contents when you look at the directory. So instead of having a drop down, this way you can select multiple items by checking the boxes. And it kind of works better with the idea of having multiple badges. So this was an iteration that we, we did based on feedback that we got from actual real world use at City Tech. And we made these revisions and we launched them. So it was after a few rounds of iteration like this that we finally decided we can take this feature, again, that was bespoke for City Tech, and we can turn it into something that is more generally available for, for CBOX Open Lab. So, you know, this isn't a one step process. You know, we can't just sort of move the code over. There's other things that we have to do. We have to make sure that the code is translatable so that you can use it in languages other than English. We have to take out the word city tech. You know, we have to do things like that. We have to make labels customizable. We have to add configuration panels. 
that would allow for um, the administrator of, of CBOX Open Lab installations to be able to manage the way that badges work in a way that maybe we didn't have on the City Tech Open Lab. Um, there's certain aspects of the City Tech of CBOX that are more dynamic than on City Tech. For instance, the customizable group types that uh, Chris talked about earlier. Um, we needed to build in ways for those to be configurable on a per badge basis for CBOX Open Lab. So that, again, this is another stage of development where we had to take what we had already built for City Tech, and then we had to add the extra features and do the additional sort of refactoring of the feature in order to make it usable by a broader audience. And we rolled that into Commons in a Box Open Lab. And then what you can see is that this can now be adopted by other institutions. So what you're, what, what you're seeing here in this screenshot is the BMCC Open Lab using the feature that was originally developed at City Tech, then was rolled into Commons in a Box Open Lab, and then was installed on BMCC Open Lab. So it's kind of this sort of a virtuous cycle where we have, you know, it's developed internally initially, then we turn it into something that's uh, free to use in the free plugin Commons in a Box, and then BMCC and other adopters use it and give feedback to us that helps us to do further iteration. We have a number of different kinds of features that are at various parts of this process. Some of them we're building for specific institutions right now. Some of them we're workshopping, we've already built, but we're kind of iterating on them. Some of them are actively being built into Commons in a Box, but this is the model that we see going forward that helps us to sort of make the most of the resources that are available in individual institutions while building tools that um, that aren't just used in one place. You know, we can build them once and then we can start sharing them outward, kind of a bang for your buck that we think is a really cool model for uh, developing software inside of institutions. So that's our presentation. Thank you very much. We're really looking forward to seeing you soon and continuing the conversation.